Nine actually winning a title with them. It was the first professional team that he actually played an LCS game with was C9. And JoJo is now the new C9 mid laner. So historically, we could see how accomplished the two wow. of them are. It's a little, uh... This is a, yeah, this is a crazy graph. Are ready to make a <laughs> judgment million. after five games? Damage no. To champs. This is a little weighted and gentle. <laughs> Just a bit. I wonder who made this one, Jet. What, what are you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> what the world's appearances. <laughs> Actually, Ms. Chipchin, you were in the crowd just yesterday being able to, you got to see Cloud9 kind of collapse just yesterday's game. How was it at that moment in which you were watching it? Any reactions on that? I was mind blown. Like, I I mean, not only was it Cloud9, it was IMT, no shade to IMT, but like, I just did not think that I would see them crumble the way that they did. It just looked like they kept struggling to get on their feet and IMT was like just doing a two step on their head. And it was so sad, but um, Hopefully, I can see JoJo do something crazy today, like the Tristana yesterday. See some nice ulties. Makes sense to me. The interesting thing coming out of C9 Draft now is we're just talking about how LCS teams have not necessarily been able to execute on the Lucian uh, bot lane. We have another Lucian Milio coming out for C9 in the second game after he got his first LCS win, Ooh. Lucian, uh, in the game that we just saw from Team Liquid. And I'm not sure if Team Liquid would even say like that yeah, was, was the Lucian really the, the reason? good execution of like kind of what you want to do with Lucian, take control of that bot side and again, rotate him around. He has a ton of uh, mid game kill pressure in particular. And then on the other side, we see Masu going back on the Vars, which he had an excellent performance on his last time out. Yeah, what's interesting to me so far in this draft you already mentioned it coming into this one. Three jungle bans straight from FlyQuest with no jungle picks whatsoever. They're going into 4-5. These are two of the best junglers that we've seen so far in the like in terms of just performance between mm. Blabber and Inspired. You can make a mention of contract, but these two players are the ones that we've had a lot of anticipation for. And it's already going to 4-5. Now, Rel is being picked here. I think there is some concern from C9 side that they'll continue to get pinched. Yeah, and that's a tank engager that they don't have in the bot lane, so I think it's a little bit more important that they get that for Blabber since they have gone with Lucian Melio, and they're going to be kind of kind of relying on Berserker Vulcan to get a lead in this particular situation because they're also going to be up against the classic Jensen Oriana. True. Yep. If it's up, FlyQuest is taking Oriana in 1 2 3. It is written. <laughs> And that means Guepo is going to be able to pick in the 4 5 like always. Yep. And this draft is business as usual for FlyQuest. Until we get to see Guepo's pick. True. Which is still business as usual, but it might be a little spicy. I think um, a poppy ban would be good here too from C9 just to take that out of it. Just so it's a little bit easier to deal so you can actually get the engage off as well for Lucian to actually play a little bit more freely. Anything you have uh, your eyes set on this one, uh, Jack? Well, I'm just looking at two of the players that play the most unique champions, Bwipo and Jojo. True. And both of these guys have been moved to the 4-5, which is fairly usual for them because they have such diverse champion pools. So Bwipo has played four unique champions in five games with his only duplicate being a champion that no one else has played in the Olaf. And then Jojo has five unique champions in his five games. So we'll see if we get, as Ms. Chim Chim was alluding to before, something spicy from Jojo here now that we're into the final two picks. It's actually the most interesting one to me. At least for FlyQuest, they actually have so much um, bandwidth when it comes to 4-5. Mm -hmm. Not just the Boypo's counter picks that we have mentioned. The Mordekaiser was one that was like pretty uh, fun to watch. But also Inspired, we've seen constantly the talks about how large his champion pool is. I, wouldn't, I don't think it necessarily works in this game, but like we talked about his fiddlesticks <laughs> as an example. Um, but like there are a few things that he has in the bag, and so I know he's confident in his jungle pool. Um, so makes sense why he would want to see the full comp to kind of nail it in. So I've been loving FlyQuest drafts throughout the split. It's one of their strongest points, I think, of their team. And I think it's only interesting now seeing them go to 4-5 here without jungle. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what they... Could be this Nico, man. Be. That's, that's a, not the best laning phase as far as I can tell against Oriana, but you can see Jodor got targeted like FlyQuest locked the Ori, they banned mm -hmm. away Azir and Trist, and they say, okay, you gotta play something a little bit less standard now. 
Yeah, and it's interesting you say that about Inspire. Raz, only because talking to him on EG too, mm. a lot of the times they would sometimes be the only team that was saving their 4 5 4 jungle yeah. uh, when it was typically picked uh, in the 1 through 3 slot. Mm. Um, one, two, three, so it is super interesting to see if they end, uh, how they have saved this kind of pick for him and whether Rippo just decides to go to. It's tough because he's blind pick, right? Yeah. I think C9 knows that he wants to counter pick and just never gave him the opportunity. Yes, 25 seconds, by the way. Now I'm gonna throw it into a nugget in your brain. I remember the last split, Nautilus was seen as a jungler that could that you could play jungle. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's going to be the pick, but if there's any kind of wrench in what C9 has been prepping, it could just be a good flex there. Is this brand? Oh, that's all. Awesome. Can, can it be something? Can it be something different? I mean, it is different. different it is different. <laughs> We'll take it with support with Oriana supporting him too. I think this one I like this. Oh! That's one point to Jet. Nice. <laughs> Look at the smirk. I, I mean, okay, the smirk wasn't this. even timed. I've wanted to see this in LCS since I believe Willer was the first to pull it out in LCK. We also have Shun doing really well with it mm -hmm. on BLG. Um, it's been played a bunch since then, but I think the big thing with Brand Jungle is that depending on their setup, they can snowball this early game so hard mm. around it. And it gets to the point where he just absolutely poops damage. <laughs> like, sorry, I almost swear. I swear too much. Well, you actually <laughs> toned, it, toned it down from yeah. what you usually say, so thank you. <laughs> First ever brand jungle in the LCS. Thanks it's God for inspired. that. So we have seen it internationally. Even with the nerf that it had um, in its clear, it's still an extremely flat, fast clear. It's much faster than Rel, that's for damn sure. So <laughs> I really want to see what Inspire could do with the pick. Uh, just as a thought for you guys, any who do you think uh, do you favor in the draft from this one? Ah, it's brand, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's a brand against a pretty short range comp. It's a little tricky to land your skill shots on Lucian, but like that's a lot of a lot of people that are gonna be fairly close together for the brand damage to bounce around. So I like that brand pick a lot. Yeah, I really want to see what their early setup around the brand is going to be. Whereas from C9, again, I know I keep repeating this ad nauseum with Lucian lanes, but you really, really want to try to focus on getting that ahead. So hopefully Blabber will pay attention, some attention down to that bot side. Hey, it's enough talking for us. We're excited for the pick. Interested to see what the thoughts are from the casters as we send it over to you guys. Thank you, Raz. I think that Brand Jungle is one of those things, even when you win against it, you can feel like you're losing. He's so... Man, I love them sounds. It's a Saturday afternoon. It's packed house. We got the cool light show thing, and we got Brand Jungle locked in for the battle of the former teammates with Inspired versus JoJo. I hope these two are both just drawing that laser sight on the other guy and trying to really just beat them up. I'm very excited to do so. If they do, and it's like 1v1 laser sights on each other, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Inspired is going to have a wee bit of an advantage. So we'll see about the team play. Of course, I always love junglers too, where you don't have to start with a health potion. Yeah. Because uh, I just don't like spending money. Yeah, and, don't want to spend that 50 gold on a little, and, uh, little drink. It feels so good not to have to <laughs> drop the extra 50 there at the beginning of the game. Inspired. We'll keep a look on his clear as well for brands. Uh, really the only like, not even tricky thing, but is managing your passive at the first couple of levels here. Once you're level two, moving over towards Gromp. Make sure you get the three hit so you can get the explosion. Yep. And he'll do the start on Wolves. No He's problem for him. He's not a zombie. He's also not the zombie. Yeah, I know you're gonna, you're gonna be critical of this. I'm one. a little bit worried for FlyQuest now. Okay, no zombie brand. He at least still has the green projectile. That's sword. not gonna cut it. Okay, That's not, not good enough, says Kobe. Not good enough. We'll see how Berserker and Vulcan do with this Lucian Melio bot lane. Lucian just getting his, uh, his first win in LCS in the previous game there. Sorry, spoilers if you missed game one. But Berserker has always been like kind of the guy that all the other AD carries are trying to catch up to Ooh. in the LCS, so. I'm really interested to see how well he can pilot this, if he can be that sort of aggressive lead transfer all over the map that Emily was talking about previously. Yeah, there's so many fun stories with this matchup too. You know, Vulcan versus FlyQuest, uh, Inspired meeting up again versus JoJo after the breakup. Mm -hmm. And we are going to keep special track of the number of ganks that Inspired spends in this game. 
looking at okay. JoJo specifically. Um, I actually think that the Nico is a very good uh, pick here into Orianna. Uh, Nico does a lot of things super well, has a lot of playmaking ability, a lot of setup for jungler. Uh, Nico plus a Rel is a devastating uh, CC combination. Oh, plus, yeah. if you're if you allow Nico to get those moves. You know, gank for the Nico first, get the Nico rums coming out. Then you can start to get tricky with it with the passive as well. And Jojo is definitely one of those playmaking mid laners. So excited to see if Cloud9 can create some of uh, those exciting plays here with this pick for themselves, because either side lane could be an option, even though you normally look at. Whoa. Never mind. Berserker under pressure, having a flash away, but Bucio's ready to follow. Berserker's barely hanging on. Berserker and Vulcan dying in the 2v2. Masu makes sure he gets them both. Masu was my player of the game yesterday on Varus and the bottom lane again today. These two young players on FlyQuest, both of them winning the award from challengers before entering the LCS of most valuable prospect. Lucio, of course, winning it one year before Masu and Masu now being a rookie coming in this year. They have been explosive down there now that they've started to get their hands on some of these more fun carries for the bottom side instead of the Seraphines and Senna action. Getting the back-to-back -back Varus games here for Masu really paying off. And now with Serrated Dirk plus Tear, feels quite nice. Let's take a look at how it started yeah. out with Berserker trying to dash in, but not getting the chunk damage. And then on his way out, Lucio just nails Beautiful. him there. Really good, taking advantage of the offensive dash from Berserker. I mean, can't be throwing away those skills versus this duo, Flowers. Yeah, it feels like uh, Berserker just let his ego get a little bit too big on that one, thinking, yeah, I could just try to punish these guys, whatever, if it doesn't work. But no, the instant response. And that play is one thing, but now you're looking at a Cloud9 bottom lane that has no summoner spells. That was all four summoner spells burned from Cloud9, and they still both ended up dying Anyway, I expect some jungler attention yes, sir. to this lane for sure. Not only are the summoner spells down, but bottom lane is the easiest, most gankable lane on the Rift as of the new season. Looks like Blabber is going to go down there, but Inspired is going to head up towards the Grubbies instead. Yes, sir. Brand looking to keep the pressure on there with those just spawning 15 seconds ago. All right, Blabber's hanging back. Just waiting to see, all right, can we get involved in some kind of a fight here? Vulcan passing oh. Biofrost. He's, he looks so shy about it. He's, he's playing, bashful, yeah. bashful just, Vulcan. Oh, he's, he's 351. <laughs> all right, Whippo stuck underneath the turret up here in the top side, down compared to the Aatrox of Fudge, but it's inspired just easily cleaning up these grubs. He does so much damage to everything. There it is, nicely done. All three picked up the fly quest, but Blabber is taking the Drake on the other side of the map as Jojo still continuing to pretend to be the Lucian. Lucian has just such a nice, clean auto attack animation. It's easier to farm with a gun than throwing a magical blob. <laughs> Guns OP. Yeah, it's <laughs> a gun. Uh, honestly, though, trading dragon for the early grubs, not the worst scenario here for Cloud9. They'll be happy to pick up Mountain Drake. Always love those extra resistances Yeah, for Mr. Blabber. Feels good, man. All right, Drake secured for C9, just a little bit after six minutes into the game, so nice and early on that timer. Means we're gonna have lots of contests for Drake's this game, I would expect, as Jensen versus Jojo in the mid lane. Not going too crazy either direction is a nice little minion lead there for Jojo, who went ahead, recalled, picked up his Ionian Boots of Lucidity. You can see the teleports had already been previously used by both mid laners, so Jojo's gonna take the advantage of where the lane is right now, walk right on back. Inspired level six, Blabber level five, Inspired thinking about stealing away some chickens, but Blabber's hungry too. He'll guarantee that he still has those. Busio wanted to predict there on Berserker. Not gonna find it. Now Berserker stepping forward again. The Ignite down on him. Vulcan gets locked up next. Masu providing a little bit more damage, but C9 is close enough to their turret. This one's not gonna result in deaths. Okay. Been a little bit aggressive. Yes, sir. Is that they shield up? Okay. Long trade between them. Berserker continuing to eat those auto attacks as Busio goes in yet again with the dredge line. Vulcan down to 300, Masu down to 250. Berserker dashes in, it is tragedy for C9 in the bottom lane. Berserker dead twice. Oh! 
Busio just lollipopped and that was beautiful. Holy! Cut the tape, Flowers! The new kids are rocking Cloud9! Let's Masu and Busio, <laughs> pure 2v2! Let's get these grandpas to bed! The most valuable oh, prospects are ready to tuck them in, man! Oh my awesome. goodness! The ego that's gotta come out of this one. Back to back, get some both. Putting them in the dirt. Oh my goodness, right in front of the tower too. Look at this, all right, so Busio goes in with the hook. Masu's just poking a little bit. This is the point where Berserker wants to go in on his barrier. He thinks the barrier is gonna be enough and it almost is. It's like one auto. Yeah. Gonna be able to get it, but the calculations, pulling it out. This one was really oh. slick. <laughs> oh, that's dirty. Good old lollipops and Look at the minion wave as they walk out. The best. <laughs> Whippo loves this, dude. Whippo was even talking about before. They've done interviews uh -huh, with him where uh -huh. he's talking about how he wants Masu to win this damn rookie award, and he's just loving the state of this game. And you know there's no better feeling for a top laner than just <laughs> seeing those pop-ups on your screen. <laughs> Everybody in chat's like, what the hell is this? You see that pop-up in the screen, your bottom lane double kills, you're like, okay, this yeah. game's looking good. And then they do it again, and you're just like, well, I guess we win. Yeah, thanks. Top, top lane's an island, and I'm on a vacation. You're just having a great old time waiting to scale up and meet up with these guys in the mid-game. So we already talked about the stat uh, last time where, uh, you know, Cloud9's been over a couple of years since they've lost two in a row. Yeah, I think this might be a good time for me to check in on how many times it's been since they lost three in a row. And it was 592 days. That's a long 595 time. days, all right. That's a long time, buddy. C9's gonna have to try to stop this avalanche in bottom lane if they wanna prevent that here. Honestly, really good job from Blabber so far in this game, keeping pace with Inspired. We always talk about how Blabber manages to find ways to get involved in the lanes while also still maximizing his farm. Neither jungler has been involved in a whole lot of anything so far. It's really just been the bottom lane show as Busio rotates over to mid now. Jojo's gonna have to back up, be respectful of this because if nothing else, Kobe, we know that this Nautilus knows how to hit the hooks. <laughs> this, this Nautilus definitely has been accurate. Um, honestly, too, yesterday, I thought Masu and Busio definitely uh, standing out. Of course, that game was pure domination. In the end, Whipple on his Olaf also pretty good to contend there, there for FlyQuest. But Jensen, Jensen gets hit with the pass-through snare. Doesn't matter too much as long as they don't overextend here. Busio just coming out to make sure that they have control of this minion wave and rotating the bottom lanes both up here, too. I guess the ward yeah. will see Varus. That ward by Raptors did... <laughs> What are the Eds the doing hell? in the top lane? Go home. So, you're drunk. Oh, Someone what collect your egg. egg. What the? attacking the turret? There's no way this is supposed to be. Riot! Why is it attacking the turret? It's not a lane minion. <laughs> and now they run home? What? Uh, Summoner's Rift Kaijus. I, okay. Attack of the Kevins. I thought for sure that the Patience Ring is supposed to be smaller than that, but Whippo's going all out, what? and Fudge is running the hell away. Whippo jumps in. He's trying to keep the 1v1 going while well, 3v3 pops off back in the mid lane. Fudge going into the Q3, but he ain't going to find it just yet as C9 disengages back underneath the Tier 1 turret. No dead bodies on the floor anywhere. I'm still pissed off about the grubs. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, well, the grubs are still pissed off too, Flowers. <laughs> That's why they ran that far. Whippo's got that global taunt. He's got the... <laughs> He's got uh, He said something about the dead Ed Nettie's. Yeah, sure. he was... <laughs> he was making fun of their eyeballs or something. I don't know. All right, that was definitely right, well, something. I cannot wait to read the thread about that later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, FlyQuest has decided they do not want to allow C9 to have this objective. They're going to take the Drake as JoJo's knocked up into the air. More damage bouncing around here with the brand ulties. JoJo, very fortunate for C9. They make space so he does not get the third bounce of the ulti back on him that would trigger the passive proc and blow him up. So he survives, but still, the objective, the Drake, goes over to FlyQuest. Yep, FlyQuest even up the dragons. Feeling pretty good about themselves, as long as some Void Grubs don't pop out behind them. <laughs> and surprise attack. Maybe Inspired's going to get the fine. jump on them first. Uh -huh. You got to kill the grubs first. Now they're yeah. docile, though. Look Leave at that. Alone. Yeah, they're calm. They? No, they're, 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 they're plotting. They're plotting. Oh, yeah, they, they, they are. They've got sinister ideas in their heads. Uh -huh. And Inspired is ready to get rid of them. He doesn't want to allow them to execute. Yeah. The guy, he's got to protect his top laner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep Whippo these things off the tower. Oh, Whippo's coming back. Things are alive. It's Whippo's revenge. 
Die, Grubs! Get out of the lane! <laughs> Die! There we go, all right! The menace has been slain. The okay. fire extinguished. No more surprises this game, Flowers. And hey, FlyQuest still did hit that breakpoint of getting five, so they'll you, have the Void Mites as the game goes on. You know my favorite part of that whole interaction was? What, the part where the grubs went into lane? I uh -huh. thought that was cool. There's no pause for it. Yes! Thank goodness. Yesterday we had two FlyQuest pauses because they had a mouse issue and a keyboard issue. I am, I really, as soon as the grubs leashed all the way over there, I was like, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've just been informed that apparently Cajal's in chat typing EU greater than NA. Maybe he just didn't watch Worlds and what happened to G2. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but uh, Cajal, I can link you the bot if you need it later, bud. Anyway, let's go ahead and go, come back into this game. XDD. Yeah, FlyQuest <laughs> is kind of treating C9 like G2. They're really oh stopping him here in this early game. And it's a 2,500 gold lead with even Drakes. <laughs> All right, the uh, <laughs> the kings of the bottom lane here, Masu and Busio under fire. Should be fine though, pops his ghost. Clean walks his way out of that one. Nothing to it, nothing to it. All right, Masu just trying to absorb some of that pressure down here. Very even farm between our two bottom laners, despite the fact that Berserker has bit the dust twice. It hasn't really impacted his farm economy too greatly, but still two and a half thousand gold lead, man. Before the plates fall, we're just about at the point where those are gonna drop 10 more seconds. This is a really good early game for FlyQuest. It, it certainly is, and it's, it's definitely all thanks to this, uh, this bottom lane here. They're the ones with the extra moolah, with the extra poke damage that they will be able to bring to the game. Now they're rotating a little bit as they have uh, Jojo pushed out mid and coming down through river to clean up some of the vision here. Meanwhile, Whippo's actually worked his way through half of the tower on top side and Inspired is coming through too. Okay, Whippo popping the ghost. He's ready to go in. Here it is, Pathmaker. Guaranteeing the setup there for Inspired's damage. Fudge is gonna try to lifesteal tank this one with Jojo showing up now. Pop Blossom, it lands, but Whippo's ready to walk this one off. He is Cassante. Yeah, that ghost. He's move speed here. Nice little sidestepping from yes, Whippo. Sir. They get the teleports. They get the chunk down as a well. It kind of opens up the map. A little bit of freedom here. Notice the bottom lane too. Mini map pushed in. <laughs> uh, man, the okay. The what noise. is happening in this game? What is League, going on? League of Legends. <laughs> Okay, welcome to season 14, we got, Flowers. We got the Nico Copter. I've got <laughs> the Grubs. <laughs> I've got, I, I, I don't know. Okay, I just watched Flowers' brain break live. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the Nico clone taunt, <laughs> trolling everybody. All right, Berserker. Oh! oh. Busio just found him again. You gotta be With kidding bait, me. No but now Masu, he's gonna be the one to drop instead. No, he barely gets away with under 100 HP. Jensen's ready to rejoin the fight, but with Fudge showing up and Blabber still at full, FlyQuest isn't gonna make this go any further. Mm, yeah, they definitely need a reset here for Masu before they try anything on these objectives. Nice little look there though. Berserker with the barrier again. Let's Lucio hit him, maybe? Question mark. Uh, yeah. All intentional bait, for sure. Totally. Five head? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, it, do it for content. I mean, they had Blabber right there, uh, and Blabber did use his flash, so it's not like Masu burned his flash without Cloud9 having to expend cooldowns there. Um, and Blabber is not running the Hex Flash here for Rel, so that flash will be meaningful. Yes, sir. Expenditure. Okay, so 16 minutes into the game, Harold is on the map. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the line right now ahead of time. If the Harold starts walking <laughs> into lane and charging its stuff without somebody killing it first, no, then I'm, I'm just, I, I don't know what game we're playing anymore. Godzilla Harold. <laughs> we need to get some skins for, uh, for the Grubs and for the Harold. Oh, that would be pretty cool, yeah. Going, I feel like. Turn him into like a big scorpion. <laughs> All right, everything's Berserker. gotta be a scorpion. Berserker's trying to pop off of the calling, but Busio hits him with a dredge line. Lots of damage pouring in from Inspired's brand, but Berserker can get away in time. Masu and Inspired, still plenty of DPS available, but Blabber is a tanky boy. He'll be able to walk this one off as Masu maintains the pressure in the mid lane over the wave. Yeah, looks like JoJo as well, they had Jensen following him, but then Jensen decided to go back up, clean up this minion wave, yep. and it is just gonna be everybody returning to their correct positions here. So we continue the farm, even though the dragon is up and the vision fully controlled by FlyQuest. Jensen, with his flash available, feels confident, gets a 
little auto here up on the turret with his extra void growth passive. All right, Jensen now could be. He's got flash. Kind of Might spot. have to use that sucker. Yep. Pop Blossom's gonna find him. Jensen not using the flash here. Instead, trying to outplay it. Late flash. JoJo might be able to get on the shot wave. Will not do enough. Jensen thought he would be able to maybe bait them in, but C9 brought enough firepower. Five Nine definitely know when they make that play. There's gonna be a cost though. They're showing three people, including their jungle on top side, so yep. they know they're giving up the dragon for that and inspired immediately goes to pick that one up but i think it's a worthwhile play anyway okay it's just dragon number two you've already split the first two dragons so the stacking towards soul is not going to be very quick um it is a cloud soul as well so they, they don't value it quite as highly and in order to get a kill on the jensen the flash off of jensen and a turret on the top side of the map i think that is well worth the price that they paid considering the state that the game was in them anyway or the game that they were in already even though Whipple ends up getting a tower on the bottom side of the map i think uh, they still probably needed to do that i think master though here with two core item now opportunity also picked up poke damage is going to be very very painful for cloud nine so they won't be able to wait around at any of these objectives and soak up any poke Jojo is going to have to make some quick moves. Flabber and Jojo, of course, the ones to do the big engage for Cloud9. Yeah. They want a combo for that big AoE on their collapse. That's what I'm thinking about. I mean, you called it out at the very start, right? The Nico and Rel working together. Even if you're losing the game for a very long time, you've got that one fight, one game type of situation where those two can really make something happen. And honestly, they need to. C9 having lost their last couple of games, the super team curse kind of manifesting as FlyQuest is going after the Herald at the very end of its lifetime. You know, this thing's automatically gonna despawn about 30 seconds from now, so they want to try to pick it up before that happens. Blabber's showing up to contest. Busio over the wall here in the brushes. The Herald is low. Blabber goes in, steals it away. TY for Leash. C9 gets the objective. Yeah, I mean, Rel is like number one in terms of stealing objectives as we Cassante our way out. Yeah. Because, yeah. I like how it's a fur. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rel Q plus the eyeball was facing him too. The Void Grubs cassante the top lane. Oh. That is what happened. I understand They cassante the Cassante. Yeah, <laughs> Cassante got cassante by Void Grubby. Ah, I see, okay. Yeah, 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 that's, how could we have missed it? Anyway, the Herald's still just trying to wreak a little havoc in mid lane. They force down the tier one turret. It's two turrets for both teams, as now the Herald will not get the second charge off onto the tier two. Still a 2,000 gold lead for FlyQuest. It's been this way ever since the double kill yeah. for the second time in bottom lane. So for Cloud9, things haven't continued to bleed. For FlyQuest, they haven't really continued to build that lead out, but it's still a situation where cloud is gonna have to find some creative angles, I think, if they wanna deal with it. Yeah, they definitely are going to. I mean, JoJo, next time he has Flash here for the Nico, maybe they go for it. Okay. He's got the Proto Belt plus the Storm Surge combination. Storm Surge, of course, getting a little tap down, so it's not quite the frightening item that it previously was, but still very powerful. Still have to watch out for that one in the big combo. Now, also, we're looking at that Lucian spike where you've got everything you need. You've got your Melio going to add up your extra range and your for your burst damage. He has his Rapid Fire Storm Razor proc. Yep. to look for his chunks onto opponents, try and chunk somebody out, then set yourselves up for a better start to one of these team fights, one of these objectives. He's got his gun, he's got his sword, he's got his cape, and he's got his shoes. little kid that puts the warm hugs. <laughs> okay, he's got everything you would need to succeed in this game. We'll see if Berserker can... And the cozy campfire. Flip the switch to the on position and start having a larger impact once we get a fight. Honestly, it's still only five kills at 21 minutes. Remember that in the game against Immortals, C9 did not get a kill until after 30 minutes into the game. And up until that point, there was only one kill for Immortals. Yesterday's game that they played was slow. Certainly Very was. Slow. A lot of criticism for the lack of action there and priority. So like FlyQuest not wanting to venture too deep here and Busio will be able to get confirmation. Cloud9 not trying to think anything too crazy as the Rel and the Nico. Yep. Please, please come closer to our brush. Jojo really liking this Berserker cosplay that he's been wearing for what feels like over half the game so far. Mm -hmm. Just always wanting to make FlyQuest 
have to second guess themselves. Yeah. Always want to try and bait stuff looking like the carry. All right, fly quest. Four man mid play. You can see it's Jensen up top pushing for fly quest. But he's gonna save here the bottom. Oh. Huge engage from Jojo. Masu's already down. Now Whitlow's trying to get something back. He goes all out and he wants the C9 mid laner. He's knocked up into the air. And fly quest get one. It's an even trade so far. Blabber's here on the front line. But even though the AD carry's dead, Inspired still has a lot of damage potential. It's the teleport from Fudge mm. that ends the fight as FlyQuest conti continues their side lane pressure with Jensen in top lane. It's actually going to be bad for Cloud9 because Jensen got the fully split push on top side. They lose their teleport off of Fudge, and it's a one for one. This is just Dragon number two. I guess it's nice to stop FlyQuest from getting to Soul Point. But it would be Soul Point 23 minutes into the game, and Jensen actually even goes back and finishes up the secondary turret here. Yeah. The secondary ones on the side lane were so much money. Jensen very happy with his split pushing this game on the Orianna. Yeah, we think of Orianna as his team fighter, but maybe Orianna's just meant to split push down the side lane. Maybe she's got a little bit of grub deep down in her heart. I see <laughs> yes in the game. Uh, here's another look though. It was a good move from Jojo uh, over that wall. We're looking at his flash plus his proto belt combination, but then he gets answered back. Berserker can't, you know, work his way through this Cassante or through Busio either. And so with the teleport coming through, that's where you get kind of the lose out in the map overall. Top turret ends up going down. They invested the extra teleport. Now FlyQuest, look at this. Two teleports. Oh boy. To their name, and Inspired wants to make use of it. Goes for the aggressive invade, steal away red buff, which is a bigger buff than it previously was now that it goes to everybody on your team. Yeah, and Blabber's gonna get hooked now. Dredge line hits him. Berserker coming in from the side looking for the culling. Masu doesn't want to eat that whole thing, but Whippo's gone in. He wants Berserker. He's all out. Piercing arrow over the top to follow him up. And Berserker's already dead. Pop Blossom gets two. Whippo's locked down, but he's still alive. He gets away with the shield as Inspired burns. Fudge Descender. Jojo's gone. Flat quest. to be the king of the grubs for them now, Baron. <laughs> yeah, up for buddy. Fly Quest. Fly Quest are dominating. This is your LCS number one team. They are tied right now in first place and they're about to get another win here, it looks like. Huge, huge fight there for Fly Quest. Not losing a single man. Whitmo gets taken low, but he can get out in time. The burst comes through, everybody dies. Berserker really having such a tough game in this one. What what a cool story here for this FlyQuest setup too. I mean, you went over it as far as the, this pick goes, but Whippo gets behind Berserker. He flashes away from the rest of the team, but the Cassante already there. They finish up the kill and then the follow-up. They get the knock up onto Nico too, so Pretty much everybody except for Inspired gets out of the range and Inspired's just massive AOE brand damage here. You don't with, care. With that dream combo we were talking about with the Rylai's plus the Andrews and he even had his crit bloom too. Busio getting his shield off. He doesn't die, nobody dies. Fudge knows. He yeah. Knows. This game is looking a toast for them. Over 595 days since Cloud9 have lost three games in a row. FlyQuest wants to turn that marker down to zero. Yes, sir. Busio constantly looking for these engages. Two, zero, and seven on the Nautilus. It's nine out of 10 kill participation for both of the bottom lane duo of FlyQuest as they're all grouped up now with the rest of the team ready to push on the tier two in bot lane. Fudge split pushing on the other side of the map and it's Whippo sent to stop him. So 4v4 combat here in the bot lane as Fudge nearly has his teleport ready to rejoin if needed, but not quite yet. This team, they put together such a young bottom lane. Masu, prospect of, uh, of the year last year. Busio, one year uh, in the LCS and combine them with a couple of veterans in Whippo and Inspired that weren't even in pro play last year getting those veterans, and then they got Jensen, who was sitting on Dignitas towards the bottom of the LCS standings, yeah. and they've just combined them all into a first place squad. Of course, Energy are the team that FlyQuest are currently tied in first place with, and we will see if Energy can keep pace later in the day, but right now, FlyQuest, with the remnants of this Baron buff, 54 seconds left of it, they can push out pretty easily. 
They're just trying to play on two lanes here, much safer that way. They can get mid and top right up to the inhibitor towers. Labyrinth, well, really thankful for that Koenig Rooker right now, having to deal with Brand so that poke doesn't wear you down. There's your Chains of Corruption. Not gonna find a mark, but Labyrinth's here on the front line. Whippo ready to start off taking that turret aggro, making sure there's enough space created for the rest of FlyQuest to just beat down the tier three turret. The push continues now. Barroned up minions, including two enchanted cannon minions. As C9 steps forward, they wanna try to stop him. JoJo's already dead. Busio's got him. FlyQuest have a green light to end this game. Jensen's already broken into the base back in mid. That inhibitor turret's gone. That inhibitor's gone. It's Nexus turrets in their sights. And FlyQuest are ready to soar. Another dredge line hits. This time on Blabber. He's stuck on the front line as Whippo is again making so much space. Blabber barely gets away. Whippo's not done. He keeps going in and finally overplays his hand. The first Nexus turret falls as the cost. And FlyQuest now command a 4v4, even compared to what it was before but still not great for C9 as they scramble to defend. FlyQuest is going to back away. The game doesn't end just yet, but C9's base is looking pretty bad. Jensen knocked up into the air there by the Aatrox, but he's Oriana. Should be able to walk this one away. Yeah. C9 still coming in. JoJo's got an unleashed teleport. That's one thing I'm going to look at here. And yes, they're going to commit it. Blabber, very low. Still trying to get back away. JoJo's ready to join up here with the team, but Fudge just melts first. Huge engage coming out from JoJo. FlyQuest out mark. One, two, three. shutdowns on the fly quest champions and they need to make the most of this moment they're still down over 6,000 gold berserker and vulcan trying to get one of these towers get that objective bounty shutdown dragon available for them as well that would be dragon soul point number three for them but 20 seconds left on inspired berserker and vulcan at damage here i guess they're gonna just yeah this should be enough they're keeping Blabber up in the base, trying to deal with the minions. Hey, Vulcan looks uh He's not as much happier. Yeah, yeah, much he's, happier he's in this more picture. Stoked about this. The assist record, definitely a bigger deal. Okay, well, well C9. That was huge, man. Certainly was. All right, objective bounty claim. The lead essentially cut in half from what it was. As FlyQuest was starting to leave the base, they were up about 9,000 gold. Now only four and a half. Let's take another look. Watch JoJo. All right, watching JoJo, teleport's coming in. Fudge is gonna get burned down while JoJo comes in. But he tags in and it's huge. Everybody gets hit with the JoJo ultimate. And Cloud9 know this is their only hope. Everybody all ins. Plenty of damage there, huge, huge stuff. There have been two really good Nico ultimates from yeah. JoJo this game at critical moments for Cloud9. And yet they're still have their backs against the wall. They have two inhibitors down. Very difficult to deal with the onslaught of pressure. JoJo is fighting for his life right now. Cloud9 desperately holding on to whatever they can sink their fingernails into to stop FlyQuest from sending this game all the way home. We've got the 1v1 down there between the top laners as the remaining four players from each team square off here in the top lane. That Nexus is exposed. Even if C9 doesn't lose anybody, if they get chunked down too low, if they have to retreat too far behind the Nexus, they'll just end up dying. But now, we've got pressure back in the base as JoJo goes to the engage, finds the knockup on Navasu and Busio. Health bars are low, but at the same time, Fudge is losing the 1v1 off the side. Berserker's gonna be killed. FlyQuest are running him over. That's gonna be it. That's gonna be the game. There's no way for C9 to defend it anymore now. Four players down. FlyQuest is gonna go up to five and one. They will take possession of first place by themselves. C9 drops to three and three, and FlyQuest are the ones putting them there. Well, well, well. One of the recipes that has worked so often, pairing some young rookies with some veterans to give them direction. Mm -hmm. A lot has been said, too, about the shot calling in-game of the FlyQuest members. Really nice stuff for this squad so far. 2024 looking to be their year. Well played, man. And it all goes back to the start of the game. It all goes back to the bot lane. It all goes back to Masu and Busio <laughs> putting Berserker and Vulcan to bed. Whip 